We're finally caught up! episode 71 of Pokemon Horizons and we finally have caught up with the series. We are officially back to the point where I can actually do these on a weekly basis, which unfortunately means this is the final daily upload you're going to get. After this, I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to schedule my, my videos and my content and all that stuff, but I hope that you look forward to anything I come up with. Now, this episode, I'm, I'm a little weird with. I, it's not, it wasn't bad per se. I just feel like certain things were just chopped into pieces and like they just put like three different storylines and plot lines and stuck them together in one episode, right? Because you have the Crystal Pool stuff, you have the Briar stuff, and then you got the Parent stuff, right? Now, so I just feel like none of this was cohesive. But each individual part wasn't bad, okay? I'm just sitting right there. It wasn't bad. It wasn't badly executed. I just feel like it felt weird to have three different things happen in one episode that aren't really linked to each other in any way, shape, or form. So starting off with the crystal pool stuff, it's basically just them reaching the pool, finding out what's going on, looking at it. It looks pretty. I gotta admit, it looked a little better in the games, but maybe that's just me and my bias and stuff like that. Uh, they get a little bit of a history lesson on to what the crystal pool is, right? And then free dips, and then it's the kids who are just there chilling, and all of a sudden the Milotic shows. Which is the same thing that happens in the games, you know, where you when they give you that task of, you know, reaching the crystal pool just to see all the sights with Kitakami, and all of a sudden you get attacked by that Milotic. So it's basically the same gimmick. It's just the fact that they didn't actually, like, defeat it. <laughs> they just befriended it, which which is one of those things where, like, I like Milotic. Don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite Pokemons of all time. It just, it just felt weird, right? To me personally speaking, that the, the whole time that they're like, Milotic is like this gentle creature that likes to like calm down people and it's always there showing off its beauty and that's what like cools everybody down. And all of a sudden you got this aggressive Milotic and like they don't even have to defeat it. You just gotta sing with it, right? That's like, like I said, the, the, the what happened wasn't bad. It just felt off, okay? In my opinion, this felt off because like, they were trying, right? The Dot, Liko, and Roy were really, really trying. And all it took was for Crockler to start singing with it, and then it sing back, and then, like, they're friends. And then Milotic loses his stratification and goes back in the water, right? The battle itself was hype as fuck, and I was really looking forward to more action. And then it just ends like that, which is a little disappointing. And then you got, you know, Briar shows up at, at, at this point. This is, like, the second part of the episode, right? And so, so we finished the first part. Now we're moving to the second part where we're having this dialogue with Briar. And my problem, like I said, this is the problem with having like three different plot lines happening in one episode. I feel like they could have given more time to flesh Briar out. Because like, yes, we get the history with her, her ancestors and, and the fact that like this person wrote the Scarlet book, which again is also disappointing because I'm a Pokemon mm -hmm. Violet person. So I, the fact that it's just Scarlet stuff, it feels bad to me because <laughs> I won't be able to have my representation in the, in the fucking show. But listen, she has like the OG version of the Scarlet Book, and then you get all this backstory of her and all this other stuff, and how like her ancestors are the first one that found Tropagos. Which I, I, I'm hoping that they're not cutting out the Professor storyline, uh, but that's what it feels like. Because yes, her ancestor might have been one of the first ones to discover this shit, but the Professor found this shit afterwards, right? That's the way that works in the games, right? You have her ancestors, which discovered all this stuff, and then the Professor. And his book was able to like delve deeper into the ethos of like Area Zero, and then he has more information that then she acquires when you go to Area Zero with her. So I'm hoping that they're not just completely cutting off the Professor storyline here because you could definitely do stuff with that. Okay, I'm just saying eventually we're gonna have to go to Area Zero because I'm assuming that's where Rakua is. In my mind, Rakua is in Area Zero, so we're eventually gonna get there. But for now. We're basically done with Briar because most of it was just them talking and like you get this this nice backstory She shows them the Scarlet book and then Liko's like well This is my grandmother stuff and then she gets a little bit more history about Tropagos and the way it transforms right and that's it They try to do like a fake out at the end where because 
I thought, okay, and this is again, I just feel weird that they cut the episode into this many pieces because they went back to the Crystal Pool to try to get like this like flashback of Lucius, kind of like how they do with you and the professor uh, after like the Pecoran stuff in, in the DLC, right? I'm assuming that where they were hinting at because they get up there and nothing happens. So we get a fake out. So there's no point for us to go back to the Crystal Pool um, unless it's going to have some significant meaning in the future, which I highly doubt. Because I don't think we're going to stay in Kitakami that long. And then, and then comes the next part of the fucking episode, right? So, so we finish two-thirds of the episode, our two different plot lines, and now we got to add a third one because then Perrin shows up and then fights Dodd, and then she's, she's seen the fucking Cleaver, and that's what's going to lead us into the next part. And the crazy thing is that they showed off Cleaver early in the episode, so we already knew these people were going to stay here. I don't know why we need a parent here. Now, this might just be my bias because I don't really do anything with Perrin in the games. I didn't follow her storyline. I didn't do anything. I didn't do her side quests. I didn't do none of that. I didn't really care for Perrin, so maybe it's just my bias and I don't really care for this character. I just feel like you didn't need to chop up the episode like this. That you could have just had, if you really wanted to show off the crystal pool, and and, and and that's fine and dandy, I don't have a problem with that, but you could have just had that and Briar. We didn't need Perrin in this episode, right? They could have just said, hey, we're still learning stuff, we're still investigating, and then you introduce Perrin next episode, and then she leads them to where eventually they're going to find Gleevor. I don't know why they need to shove all three plot points in one episode. Right? This is like the first week episode, and like I said, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. I want to reason say that it wasn't a bad episode. I just feel like they tried to shove too many things into one episode that did not go with each other. None of these three plot points actually felt like they led into each other. It just felt like each individual story contained in one episode, and it's it just bothers me. Okay, it bothers me. Like I said it wasn't a bad episode, but especially with the high that I've been on since I came back, this is definitely a weak episode compared to everything else we've seen up to this point, right? And, and maybe it's just like, it, it was eventually going to stop. I was eventually going to hit a roadblock and we were going to get an episode that wasn't as good in my opinion. But I guess this is just starting off to the next one. I'm a little upset that we're getting Cleavor first over Entei because Entei felt like the next logical step. But I guess because we're in Kitakami, they have to do the whole timeless wood shit. Right? And because that's where you, you you find the Blood Moon or Saluna and shit like that. So they're like, oh, well, can we can just use the Timeless Woods to get Cleavor because it makes sense that there's Pokemon from the past here. I don't know. I, I feel weird about that. Personally speaking, I, I don't know how I feel about that. But Cleavor's next, I guess. And we're going to be chasing after it for a couple of episodes because I don't think they're going to find it in the next episode. It's gonna, definitely going to take one or like two or three episodes at most because most of these heroes. It's not like a one episode deal, right? So we're probably going to get some hints of it next episode. And then we're going to get another episode where, we're, where I guess we're finding the general vicinity where it's at. Then we're going to get some action episode dealing with the thing. And then eventually we're going to catch it. I don't know how I feel about this. Okay, I, I'm just hoping that Cleavor at least is cool, right? And we get some interesting action with it. And, and that he's not a total blowout, okay? I hope that he actually contributes something. When he finally shows up. Other than that, I think we're gonna leave it off there. Uh, I want to appreciate everybody for joining me on this daily outflow schedule that I've done for the past like two weeks at this point. Um, I really appreciate all of you guys who've been supporting me. We're finally back to weekly uploads with Horizons. No more daily episode reviews because we finally cut up. That's the best part about this. <laughs> but anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been your host, Horace Crossing, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.